Okay, let's graph some absolute value functions. Now, if you're going to graph a function like this, the first thing you want to do is graph the function without the absolute value signs. So here you'll see I've graphed the function. I know from this right here that I've got a y-intercept of negative 1. And from my slope, I figured it goes up 1 and over 2. There's my x-intercept. That's where it equals 0. But you'll notice that on the whole negative side, I drew it in with a dotted line. Now, I drew it in with a dotted line because in an, in an absolute value function, there is no negative side. So what I'm actually going to have to do is I'm going to have to take that part and flip it up. Anything on the positive side or up to and including zero is fine. But it's all this stuff on the negative doesn't work. So over here, it was one unit below. So it should be one unit above. Two units below, two units above, three units below, three units above, four below, four above, and so on and so on. So now I can go through and I can finish sketching that line. Let's add that in. There I have my sketch of my absolute value function. Now, really, this dotted part shouldn't be in there, so I'm just going to quickly delete that out. And now more just as a note to myself, I look at this function, I take this side, and I call it the regular, because that's what would have been positive before. We haven't had to change that. This over here, the left-hand side, we did have to transpose, we had to transform it, so I call it the flipped side. Now, if I want to rewrite this whole equation as a piecewise function, I would rewrite it as, and we got two parts to it. We've got the regular part, which is 1 half x minus 1, and that is if x is in between. Now, we've got this point right here, which is x equals positive 2. Sorry. If x is an element of 2 to infinity, and then we've got the flipped part if x is an element of, go all the way from negative infinity up to 2, not including. Notice I have only included 2 in one part and not both. All right, let's look at a quadratic function. Same thing again, I've got absolute value here. So what I need to do is I'm going to start by graphing the, uh, the function without the absolute value signs. So here I've drawn the function for you. You should know how to uh, draw a quadratic function by now. If not, I have some other videos that will help you with that. But here are my points. Now once again, because it's an absolute value of that, these two sections down here that are negative won't actually, uh, they can't be down there. So we have, all we have to do is really flip them up. So what I would end up doing is this, this piece on the right would end up going up like that, on the left, go up like that. And the depart with the dotted line shouldn't be there. The dotted line is mostly for my reference, so it can help me draw. And there we have the function as it's drawn. All right, I suppose I might as well write it as a piecewise function as well. Uh, so if I'm going to write this out, it equals. Now we've got a regular part, so it's going to be equal negative x squared plus 2x plus 8 if x is an element. Now in this case, sorry, if x happens to be between, now the regular part started at minus 2, and x was greater than or equal to, and it went all the way up to 4. That was the part we did not have to flip. The part we had to flip, so I'm going to write this in as negative negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. 
And in that case, it was if x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 4. So the outside wings. And that's where we get the piecewise function.